guys, this is Hudson on Base with Chess Homes Unlimited, and today we're talking about what can you do with $20,000. There's a whole lot of things you guys can do with $20,000 that will change your entire life. Let's ride over to the YouTube studio so we can talk. Peace. What's up, YouTube, Instagram, everybody? This is Hudson on Base with Chess Homes Unlimited. And today's topic, $20,000. What can you do with $20,000? We're going to talk about that right here today on Chess Homes Unlimited. Stick and stay. Don't go away. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're watching all of the videos, incredible videos that I'm bringing you guys. And we're going to start that topic right now. All right, guys, so today's topic, $20,000. What can you do with $20,000? There's a successful YouTuber on YouTube that I follow quite a bit. His name is Real Motivation. Real Motivation actually made a great video that I watch quite often. Uh, it says $25,000 Lamborghini Gallardo. How you can buy a Lamborghini Gallardo with just $25,000. Of course, this is $20,000. And you would need to get the other five to buy that Lamborghini Gallardo. But Will kind of talked about that metaphorically. So let's take a look at that video and see what Will said about buying a Lamborghini Gallardo for just $25,000. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Will Motivation. And in today's video, $25,000 Lamborghini. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did that. All right, so you're probably wondering how in the world did this dude get a real Lamborghini Gallardo for $25,000. But let me show you how I took $25,000 um, and turned that into $80,000 plus, all right? Now, I did that through taking my $25,000 um, and investing it in real estate, all right? And I'm gonna show you what happened. It happened in several scenarios, actually a whole lot of scenarios, but I'm gonna just show you this first one, all right? So there's a couple of ways you can do this. The way I did it was through buying properties and then flipping the properties. The other way I did it was through buying properties and then renting them, basically holding them for a while, renting them out, letting the people that um, stay there um, take care of the house, live in the house. And then over time, I would buy the house, first of all, at a good price. I would, I would do my research, I would find the houses, buy them at a good price. And that over time, they raise in value. Um, this is how I got my first Lambo, like I said, um, I did a flip. I bought a house and I sold it for a profit. All right, and I fixed it up, made it look real nice. And I, I'm gonna show you how much money I made off of it. And I invested less than $25,000 to get this house for it. Now, I bought this house um, around Christmas time of 2015. Like I said, this is before I bought my first Lambo. I bought it um, at the end of 2015 for $111,000. But hold on, you guys are saying, hold on, Will, how did you buy it? How, how are you getting a Lambo for $25,000 if the house costs $111,000? I'm going to show you um, because basically what I did is I took my $25,000 as a down payment and then I got a local bank to give me the rest of the money to buy the house. Simple as that. So I bought the house for less than $25,000 of my own money and I'm going to show you that. Then when I turned around and sold it a few months later, look. Uh, April. It only took me four months to make this, this money. Look how much it sold for. $189,000. Ended up being $188,000. $188,000 minus um, $111,000. $77,000. But you got to remember, um, actually, when I bought the house, I had already had $25,000. So add my $25,000 on top of this profit plus $25,000. That's how much money I had after I sold this house. So I'm showing you how you take $25,000, invest it in real estate, turn around and sell the real estate, rent the real estate out, and you can afford to get a Lambo. All right, so that's that video, guys. And as you can see in the video, Will explained in detail how he was able to acquire, uh, maybe I don't know if it was his first Lamborghini or not, but how he was able to acquire a Lamborghini Gallardo with just $25,000. Now again, this is $20,000. So a lot of people, believe it or not, unfortunately, would just blow this type of money, okay? They would not use it for investment purposes. They would not use it to uh, to build the cash flow. 
to even double and triple it. But today on Chess Homes Unlimited, we're gonna talk about how you can double and tri triple or quadruple or 10X. If you wanna use Grant Cardone's method, you can 10X this $20,000 right here today on Chess Homes Unlimited. Let's start with topic number one. The first thing you can do is you can start a business with $20,000. You can actually go out, file for a business. If you're in the state of Georgia or wherever the case may be, you can go out and start a business for as minimum as $100. Let's say that business is a car dealership or something like that, something that you can actually go out and purchase your first vehicle for maybe 500 bucks. You can get registered at an auction. You can do that right from home, right in your apartment, right in your townhouse, your house, wherever you live, you can start a car business and go out and simply file for the business, file for your auctioneer's license, go buy a vehicle with, you don't need the whole 20,000, you can use maybe $500, you can use $1,000, you can use whatever minimum number it is, but then you turn around, you put a little bit of repairs in that vehicle, you flip that vehicle and turn around and sell it for double what you started with, okay? Boom, there's your first investment uh, company that you can actually start for way under $20,000. I've got a video I'm gonna show you guys right now about how people don't spend money the right way. Take a look at this video. Hi, my name is PJ, and welcome to our short presentation. Have you ever wondered how the rich keep getting richer while broke people stay broke and the middle class seems to be shrinking? Well, this isn't nearly as mysterious as it may appear when you examine the specific differences in how broke people, the middle class, and the rich spend their money. Now this is such a simple concept, yet so profound, it nearly knocked me out of my chair when I finally understood it. I'm going to show you exactly how the rich spend their money, and you can evaluate for yourself why they keep getting richer, and the broke keep getting broker, and why the middle class remains so stressed out. Now let's take a look at how broke people spend their money. Now when I say broke people, I'm not referring to the destitute. I'm speaking about that large portion of our society that lives from paycheck to paycheck and who never seem to have any money. In fact, most times there's more month left at the end of their money, and I'm sure many of you can relate to that group. On payday, broke people buy what I'm going to call stuff. Well, what's stuff? Well, that's inexpensive things that people buy that they don't really need to survive. You go into someone's house and you can't find any counter or tabletop space in the whole house because of all the stuff on it. Their house and their cars are full and cluttered with stuff. Well, where do they get all this stuff? They buy it at the flea market, at the garage sale, at the dollar store, at the craft show. So cash flow comes in and then it goes straight out the expense column to buy stuff. You see, broke people never really educate themselves on assets and liabilities. They justify buying all of this stuff by claiming that it costs so little. But over the years, it's all they ever have. The problem is their cash flow never produced or created more cash flow. Now please understand I'm not undermining or taking any shots at this or any group. I just see a lot of financial difficulty out there and it really doesn't need to be that way. Creating wealth isn't a mystery, it's a formula. The only reason someone doesn't create wealth is because they either don't know the formula or they don't apply the formula. Now let's take a look at the middle class. The middle class is the group that society mistakenly thinks are rich. They're not. Yes, they typically earn a six-figure income and many of them appear rich but it's what they buy with their money that keeps them prisoners of the middle class. What they typically buy are liabilities. Remember the definition of a liability? Things that cost you. By buying liabilities, the money gets pushed up and out their expense column. Liabilities are items like cars, boats, houses, airplanes, 
credit card debt. Now let's see just how this happens. The middle class gets a nice paycheck, let's say $10,000 for the month. They then split that down the middle and they pay their monthly expenses with half and with the other half they make a down payment on a new car. The car costs $5,000 down and after they add on the insurance and the maintenance that liability now costs 1100 new dollars every single month. A few months go by and they want a boat, then a vacation home, a Rolex watch on their credit card, a vacation on their credit card, and before you know it, their liabilities have raised their expense levels to near or above their income levels. They actually spend equal to or more than they make meaning that they have to go to work and make a certain amount of money every single month just to cover their liabilities. The other important issue with both broke people and the middle class is that normally all of their cash flow is dependent on their own effort, meaning that they've educated themselves to exchange their knowledge and expertise for someone's money. Also, the money they earn is usually the highest taxed form of income. Here's an example. An attorney is knowledgeable about law, so people pay him or her in exchange for that knowledge on an hourly basis. The problem here is that if the attorney isn't sharing that knowledge with a client, then the attorney isn't making any money. This causes lots of stress and anxiety in their lives and if you ever ask them to take an afternoon off to play golf with you, well they very rarely can because of how much money it'll cost them to take that time off. On the surface, life's pretty good. The reality is that it's a roller coaster ride. That's the middle class. Now I know this group very well because for a great deal of my adult life that was me. Now let's take a look at how the rich people spend their money. Rich people acquire assets. Again, an asset is something that pays you. If you want to become rich, buy assets that earn you more money. The money cycle looks like this. Acquire assets that produce cash flow. Invest the profits to acquire more assets that produce more cash flow. Invest those profits to acquire more assets that produce more cash flow. The rich spend their money and acquire things that produce more money. Here are a few examples of assets that produce more money. Investments are the obvious ones, stocks, bonds, real estate. Education is another asset. If you learn how to do something that produces more money for you and you actually do it, that's buying an asset. There's a great quote that goes, if you think education is expensive, you should see how expensive stupidity is. Number two, the number two thing you can do with $20,000, you can actually use this money to lend it out to other people who need money for investments, who need money to start their businesses at an interest rate of anywhere from 10% and even higher, okay? You can lend this money out at a high interest rate and make your money double and maybe even triple on the payback of that particular loan, okay? Or at least get 10% on your money. A good investor will tell you that a 10% return on your money is a great, great in return on your money. That's a great investment, okay? Most investments are not, if you put your money in a bank right now, if you put this $20,000 in a bank right now, do you know how much you would get back? 0.1%, 0.2%. 0.0102%, not 0 0.1, 0.01 or 0.02% right now, okay? Some banks are giving, uh, maybe like Capital One, people like that, might be giving as high as maybe 1% or 2% on your investment uh, with your money sitting there. But you would have to have millions of dollars sitting in an account in order to make any substantial money to be able to live on year after year. Most people don't have millions of dollars just sitting in an account and living off the interest. It doesn't work like that. So if you've got $20,000, you can lend it to, say somebody like me who's a house flipper, investor, 
a trustworthy person. Make sure you're giving your money to somebody trustworthy. Don't give your money to uh, Uncle Ray, Aunt Susie, uh, Lita, whatever. Don't give your money to those people. Don't give this money to family. Do not give $20,000 to your family to uh, invest or anything like that. Make sure it's a trustworthy investor, somebody that's actually investing in real estate, stocks, bonds, whatever the case may be, and charge them an interest rate, charge them a premium to borrow that money. You're a non-conventional bank where a lot of times these people can't get loans from conventional banks, especially right now. It's a tough time to get loans. So with banks not lending money, giving out money, if you're sitting on $20,000, you can, might be able to loan some of that money out to somebody who's an accredited uh, real estate investor and then charge them a premium on that money. Therefore, you're turning your money around. If they're honest and truthful, you're getting your money back with a larger return based on the interest on that particular loan. So once again, $20,000 you can borrow to a real estate investor, a stock market investor, whatever the case may be, and then charge an interest rate on that money. What else can you do with $20,000? You can take this money, start you a Robinhood account, okay? Go on your phone, type in Robinhood app, all right? Pull that app up, start looking at some of my old videos in my YouTube channel where I talk about investing in uh, the stock market. I even got one that says, don't buy houses right now. And I'm the biggest person that would never say don't buy houses, but I got a video that talks about don't buy houses right now, buy stocks, okay? And I've even got a lot of the stocks that I've actually made a lot of money on with those stocks, okay? Hint, hint, $20,000. But nonetheless, in the course of the last three weeks to a month, a lot of people have made a lot of money in the stock market. All right, so that's something that you can do. Download that Robinhood app. Here is the app. Here is the Robinhood app. Don't know if you guys can see that or not. I don't want to show too much of my information, but I've got about $15,000 right now invested into my Robinhood stocks, okay? Not only is it $15,000 that I've made from investing into the Robinhood uh, stocks and things like that, which are, by the way, free investments. You don't have to pay anything to buy in or buy out of these stocks, but I've made about $15,000 investing so far into Robinhood and the stock picks, stock quotes. Um, some of them are American Airlines, okay? I've already made a ton of money on American Airlines. Another one that I invested in was GoPro. When they went all the way down to, what did GoPro drop at? Where did I buy in at? They went down to about almost $2 and something per share. Let me see. Actually, it might have been lower than that. $2.29 per share. I pretty much caught them at the bottom. Now they're trading at $3.45 per share. Another one that I bought, I bought 3,000 shares of Oasis, O-A-S, okay? It was only at like 29 cents a share when I went in, or 25 cents a share, but nonetheless, right now, it's at about 50 something cent per share. It actually went up to 70 cent or so per share at one point. Now it's trading around 50 to 60%, 60 cent per share. What else can we do with $20,000? Now we get on to my favorite, my personal favorite. Uh, and again, I encourage you guys to take a look at some of my early videos. I don't have that many, it's only like 30, something like that, I don't know. But take a look at some of my earlier videos where I talked about I paid $25,000 or $23,000 on my first investment, my first real estate investment property, I only had about 20 something thousand dollars, okay? And it wasn't 29 or 28, it was like 21 to 23, 21 to 25 or whatever the case was, I can't remember. But nonetheless, I took that money and I bought my first flip property. I encourage you guys to do that. That's the number one thing that I would recommend for you guys to do with $20,000 is purchase a flip property. Go out and learn how to do real estate, how to do flipping houses, how to do wholesaling houses, how to buy your first house. Let's talk about that. Let's backtrack a little bit and rewind. What can we do with $20,000? 
you can buy your first house with $20,000. You don't even need 20,000, 10,000. $10,000 will buy you a $200,000 house very, very easily, okay? There's loans and interest rates today. Like right now, I think interest rates are somewhere around 2% or zero to 2%. That is a great interest rate on a loan. Take 10,000 of the $20,000 and purchase you a property. Get your credit right. You can pay someone $200 Actually, I don't even encourage paying anybody to, to fix your credit and all that kind of stuff. There are credit repair places out here for people that are not computer savvy and tech savvy to get some of these things done. And if you gotta pay them, by all means, go for it. Go ahead and pay them. Just make sure they're legitimate. But if you need to get your credit right so that you can buy your first home or property, make you can use $10,000 $10, is way more than enough to fix your credit, okay? You don't need $10,000, guys, to fix your credit. That is way more than enough. If anybody's charging you $10,000 to fix your credit, call me. Give me a call, okay? If, so, if you're gonna pay out $10,000 to fix your credit, please call me at 770 whatever the number is it'll flash up um but again guys use some of this money to fix your credit if you're in a credit crisis and you can't buy a property or you can't buy a house because of that use some of this money to fix your credit that's a great way uh, a great start of things that you can do to to actually do that okay so again purchase your first house you can use $20,000, under $20,000 to purchase your first house. That's that's very, very simple to do. Again, you can qualify for a 200, maybe even $300,000 house with and pay just $20,000 to get in that house, including down payment and closing costs if you negotiate the closing costs correctly, okay? So that's another thing you can do with $20,000. Once again, guys, I'm Hudson on Base with Chess Homes Unlimited, just giving you some tips on things that you can do with $20,000 that will increase your life, increase your earnings, increase your, your uh, just your whole livelihood, uh, in general, guys, the purpose of this channel is to teach you how to invest in real estate and what you can do with money when you get your hands on it. Here's what you do not want to do with $20,000. Do not go out and buy a car. Although I just went out and bought a car. Right, oh, you can't get that. You can't get, hey, hey. That's the Tahoe right there. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. But today we're gonna to talk about what to do when you get $20,000 in your hand. That's our topic for today. So guys, take a ride and let's get together. Let's take a ride. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube. So I done done this a million times. <laughs> Subscribe to the YouTube channel and let's take a ride, guys. Peace. Yeah.